Hello everybody, Drew here, tip of the mint flips, where I'm a stay-at-home dad and a part-time eBay reseller. And every 100 subscribers, there's a giveaway. So if you're watching, make sure you subscribe so you have a chance to win. I have nine orders going out today. Today is a Saturday. I don't normally ship on Saturdays, but because Monday is a shipping holiday, I pushed shipping Friday back to today to, so that I don't have such an extended shipping time because people buy it Friday afternoon. I don't ship it out till Tuesday. That's a long time. So I was like, okay, I'll just wait till Saturday, ship everything out Saturday morning, maybe get a couple extra sales. That didn't happen. Sales still not, not great. It is what it is. I'm also compounded with the fact that sales across the board are just kind of down. I've also been listing mostly long tail items, a lot of cheap items, that kind of thing. I will be doing something next week because of the shipping holiday, because I won't have to ship out anything till Wednesday, possibly Thursday, depending on how sales go today. So what I'm gonna do Monday and Tuesday is I'm gonna do a listing challenge of some sort where I'm going to, and it's not so much a challenge, but I'm going to try to list my most valuable items down. So it'll be kind of a guess because something like this right here, or maybe even like this that I've just really not wanted to do for a long time. But this is worth, I think like 200, 250 bucks. This is mine from my childhood. But something like that, like I said, two, 250. But if it doesn't work, then I'm parting it out and a whole thing. So I'm going to go from an assumed most expensive item down and see how many dollars I can add to the store over two days. Uh, Monday will be kind of like a half a day listing, but Tuesday I could list for 12 hours if I could, if I could manage it, which I can't. I don't know. I just can't. I used to be able to just go and go and go, but now without caffeine at like that two o'clock point, I just lose it. I get, I got nothing. I'm getting very little output for how much I'm trying to put in, but I also can't drink caffeine that late in the day because I'll be up the rest of the night. So I don't really have a solution for that. Maybe I'll do some push-ups? I don't know. I don't know. Anybody got some solutions that are non-caffeine to get you through that second half of the day, that last little push? Uh, it's just not for me. But either way, first thing going out, A3 is a Cabela's wallet. A123. Oh, this very thin wallet here. As you see, it's not much to it, but it's Cabela's leather. It's actually going international. So let's see where that's going. While that's loading, I also have three TCG player orders going out for around $5 in profit. But that I'm okay with because $5 in profit and it's like uh, 12 cards. When it's $10 in profit and it's 150 cards, that's worse. It's a lot. It's a lot of time. This one is going to the United Kingdom. It was confusing because their username is just a bunch of numbers. So I was looking for a username. And there wasn't one. Well, I mean, there was, but it was numbers. So I don't know if that means they're a guest or they just have the least creative username on eBay of all time. I don't want to tell you what it was, but it was all the exact same number except for one. So I don't think that's a random number if, if that's how it works for when you buy as a guest. But I don't, I don't really know. Either way, don't remember where I got that. I think actually that was at a charity sale. So I would have paid maybe a dollar, but probably not. But I got for that $24.99. It says plus shipping, but that's a lie. I got $24.99 free shipping, and then eBay got a boatload of shipping for eBay international shipping. $15 to be exact. $14.76 to ship that to the United Kingdom, which that always surprises me. Something like this that's been listed for a while, I can't get it sold in the States for free shipping, but then somebody in United Kingdom is going to shell out an extra $15 to get it across the pond. Next up, it's a book. It's uh, an antique book, 1919 Life and Work of Theodore Roosevelt. It's this one here. Yes, it is Life and Work of Theodore Roosevelt. And this, I think, is, yes, it is. This is like a door-to-door -door book salesman sample. That's why it's got this weird thing in the front. And then if I can get to it. It's got, you know, pictures. Is this the one? Maybe not. I think I'm confusing it with another book, but it does have that little insert in the front. I had one. I thought it was this one. Maybe it was a different one, but it was very cool. It can't be that one because it had two different strips in the front cover 
of the different bindings you could get because that was a thing, door-to-door -door salesman. Hey, this is a book that's out you might want to buy. Here's the covers you could get. Just a just an odd, very odd thing that that was a profession at one point. Door-to-door -door book salesman. Weird. But I guess, you know, if you're predating television, you know, entertainment was very limited. So books were probably... You know, it'd be like getting an email for a new Hulu or Netflix account. So I mean, door-to-door -door salesman, hey, here's the new books. You want to be entertained? This is what you got. Uh, $19.99 free shipping, if I didn't say. That actually reminds me of something I have odd knowledge about. I used to be a professional kite flyer, which I made up the word kitesman because there's not like a title for somebody who flies kites professionally. So I would just tell people I was a kitesman. So I knew a bunch of kite facts, history. And the one I thought was the craziest is that when kites made it to, I want to say China, but some Asian country, but I want to say it was China, kites made their way to China and they had to ban them for a certain amount of time because it was so cool and it was like, it was the coolest entertainment that had happened. You know, before that it was stick or rock or whatever they happened to have and people quit tending their fields. Farmers quit going to work because they were so overwhelmed with how cool flying a kite was. Which I could imagine, you know, you are giving flight to something. That's unheard of outside of the things that already fly. You probably think it's some amount of magic at that point. But I just always think that's a very cool kite fact. I actually have a bunch more. I won't go on and on. But the history of kites is actually pretty interesting. Next up, B3F is a coach bag b3f and not like a coach purse like a coach i would say maybe a ring bag doesn't have to be a ring could be earrings or whatever some amount of some type of jewelry i assume went in this coach bag but always look out for expensive brands and then the things connected to those expensive brands you don't actually have to find the coach purse or wallet it's not a ton of money i got 989 free shipping if I wanted to, it would hurt my metrics on eBay, but I could fold this in half, put it in an envelope with a stamp and send it along. I won't though. I'll send that first class. That was my intention when I listed it. And I'm still, because that was probably free, I'm still making $4 in profit for nothingness. But coach bags or high-end shoe boxes, just the box alone, even uh, electronics, Apple products specifically, the boxes, if you have the newest one is just the box, resellers will buy them, stores will buy them. They have some value to you as a reseller. They have very little value usually to the person getting rid of them. So you get them for nothing. Next up, B4. It's a kerosene wick, but it's 20401U. 20401U. Come on, get it first time. No. Nope. I think it's one of these ones. Here we go. 20401U. I'll clean that up later. <laughs> For this wick right here, $13.99 free shipping. I paid less than a dollar for that because I miscounted when I purchased them and I meant at a charity sale to give them a dollar a piece and I had one extra. So less than a dollar. $13.99 free shipping. And this is the time of year where those will start selling. Sold one last week. Of course, that one this week. And I assume over the next month, the rest will be gone. Because I have sold these before and they do sell through at a pretty good rate during the time where that's necessary. I actually had to kick on my heat. I thought I turned it on last night. I did not. <laughs> it was very cold, but I had to turn it on this morning. Not a fan. It'll probably, it's it'll be one of those on and off for the next month. You know, there'll be random warm day even next month, that kind of thing. But, you know, the less times I have to turn that thing on, the more money stays in my pocket. Next up, B1A is a Servalier Tupperware lid. You'll see it right on top because I just listed this last week. And I had to sit around forever. I don't know why I didn't list it right away because they're so easy. But these Servalier lids, the ones with the ribbed, fluted top like that, they are 100% worth listing every time if you get them cheap enough. I paid, I think I paid 50 cents for that. And I got it in a bundle deal with a the grill. If you guys remember the grill I got for myself that I ended up having to part out because it was a piece of junk and it just 
burns food. So 50 cents for that, $13.49 free shipping. That is a great return. I'm making like five plus dollars on this lid. In most cases, in most cases, the Servalier lids are worth selling without the container connected to it because the shipping difference is so huge. It's a shame because then you're just recycling the other part or you're donating it or whatever you do with it. I put them in my garage sale. At this point, unless it's the canisters like this, and unless you have a complete set and in a color and pattern that's in demand across the board, pull the lids off. I mean, check the price, of course, but in my experience, 90% of the time, the lid is worth selling. The rest of it is not. Next up, A3 is an American Girl doll bag. A123, it's bagged up right here. This I paid up for. I paid, I think, $5 for it. It was in with some other American Girl doll stuff. I did find multiple extra items in with the whole lot that I didn't know was in the lot. So I did get a little extra bonuses in there, but I paid specifically, I think $5 for that item because I remember being shocked because I said how much for this stuff. And then as we're totaling up, she was counting the stuff individually, like the bag, which I thought was included in the bundle, but I was kind of too far in. I said, all right, whatever. But it, I made up for it with the bonus things that I didn't know were in there. And $25 free shipping. I think I had it listed $39.99 free shipping, but I mentioned in a previous video, I not only am receptive, more receptive to offers right now, I have to be more receptive to offers right now because sales are bad. Not slow, not eh, bad. I actually went and did some tinkering in the shop, lowered some prices on some older items, currently running a sale a more aggressive sale, a 20% off sale, which is basically as high as I'll go. I'll reduce prices, but as far as running a sale, I don't like to go above 20%. I know some people do the opposite. They way overprice their items and then they'll run like 50% off sales. I don't know. That seems like too much to keep track of, too much that could go wrong. That's for somebody else to do, not me. But I was like, okay, let's look at some, you know, last year's numbers compared to this year's numbers. And my sales are down, my number of sales is only down 11%, which still, that's a lot. That's that's nothing to laugh about. That's a lot for my volume of sales to be down 11% because the number of items in my store is up. So that's a bad trend, but I have been listing a lot of low dollar, a lot of long tail. You know, I, I'm up to, on the patterns, listing like 110. So that's a lot of volume in an area that this is going to take five years for all these to sell off. And I'm not, I haven't even cracked the surface on how many I have to list. So after I finish, not to sidebar too much, after I finish this bucket, I'm going to have to pull off that project for a little while and just list basically everything else. But my sales dollars, to get back to the point, are down 32%. That's huge. Huge, 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 huge drop off. Cause I've, I knew it was down, but when I saw that, that number, I was like, whoa, what, what has changed? And what has changed is the shoes. Last year, I bought a vintage Nike shoe collection where I had multiple pairs of shoes worth over $500. I would have this amount of sales, but then tack on a $650 pair of shoes. That gives you a real big bump. And it was also, I had bought them still during the height of the shoe craze. So I was getting top dollar for some of these shoes, which has waned. And so therefore I lowered some prices. I'm more agreeable on taking offers, but I'm down to three, six, seven, eight. Looks like I'm down to eight pairs from that buy. And it was 70-ish, 70 70-plus 70 pairs of shoes. That is the moral of the story. It's hard. I, I just, I would say, okay, well, I need to target higher priced items. I don't live in a place that's possible. I can't just go, oh, okay. Because the, the go-to is people will always say, go to online auctions, which, yes, that's a good source. If you live close enough to go pick the stuff up, if you don't, you have to spend so much time. It's an unbelievable amount of time to find the item, 
get the item at a low enough price to make money, get the item at a low enough price to pay for the shipping to you and still make money. So it's really not feasible in my area to just say, oh, okay, well, let me just go target some higher price items because I'll pay up. I don't care. I paid, uh, I don't remember exactly how much, like two, close to two grand for the shoes. So if, if an opportunity comes up, I jump on it. I, on a weekend, made that deal happen. But it just, I actually, it, the bank was closed. I had to go locate cash. But it's just, it's not one of those things I could just say, oh, okay, let me go get higher priced items. It's not possible. I live in a poor town. Higher priced items just don't come up all the time. But I have, I have to figure it out. I have to figure out a way to get higher priced items in my store, which is why I'm going to do that challenge next week of, how many dollars can I get? Let's just list the most expensive items I have sitting around and at least do what I can until I locate more. List the ones I have. That seems pretty simple. I feel a little foolish for not have already doing that, but always with the higher price items that I get, generally, I guess I would say, they're a pain. You know, I have this one, which is a good item, but I got to make a video and it just takes a little longer and it's just a little more. This that I have to set up this entire thing, which the reason I quit playing with it as a child is because it was very hard to set up. This item I have to set up and test. This could end up not working at all, but I did only pay a dollar for it. So even not working, I'll make money there. You know, the game systems, I gotta test them. The things that I get that are worth more money tend to come with a lot of extras stuff like these things, which these are not high dollar. These are just ones I have left. I quit selling bigger electronics, which used to be a lot of my high end, but now I won't list one if I'm not gonna make $50 plus because it's not worth all the extras that come with selling large electronics like that. Maybe if it's a Panasonic, who oh, I can't remember the name of them, but the VCRs with the blue stripe, those I'll pick up and sell because the sell-through rate is fantastic. So those I'll, I'll pick up anyways, even if I'm only making 20, 25 bucks because they'll sell almost immediately if you price them right. Next up, Pat 56 is, surprise, surprise, a pattern. Pat 56, it's gonna be all the way at the back. Look at that. Pat 56 is this, these cool, cool vintage sweater patterns. It's a Butterick 3977. And for that item, $7.99 free shipping. I countered an offer. I got the patterns for per pattern a penny. That's what I'm going to say because 75% I got for free. The rest I got for pennies. So, I mean, per pattern, it's it's so cheap. Speaking of electronics, next up is an Optimist SCT-39. Optimus SCT. Oh, is it this one? It has to be. It's an Optimus. I don't see the number on it, but... It has to be this one. I'm not going to get it out right now. But this item right here, I tested that. The, that's the other problem with electronics is I could test it, clean it. If it sits around for a year and a half, it something could happen in that time, especially tape decks, because the drive bands are basically a rubber band and they could just dry rot sitting in the garage. So there's a lot of risk to make $24.99 plus shipping when I probably paid $5 for that item. So what am I making? Because I'm getting fees on the shipping, I'm gonna make 15 bucks on that. That cannot be part of my business model. So that's why electronics have basically been eliminated because my threshold of which ones I'm willing to work with is so much higher than it used to be. I used to just buy them up, I didn't care. I would have stacks of them everywhere and I made a bunch of money doing it. But was it worth the time and effort? Probably not. Should I have just sold the ones that were, you know, in the 100 plus range? Yes. And last thing going out is this a viewer sale. And this is going to Main Street Geek. I think you might have left your name here. But note from buyer, love the channel, big fan. These will be going in my collection, trying to get every Wii U game they ever made. That is awesome. I am myself a bit of a completionist, is what they call it where you want collections, where you have them all, that's a, that's a, <laughs> it's a slippery slope. It can be, that can be a slippery, slippery slope. That is the business model of Funko Pops, where they're like clinging on to those completionist collectors. But as far as games, 
I think that's a good one, especially when you're not going super retro into, well, super retro ends up getting cheaper, like Atari. But when, when you're in like that GameCube range, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, that can get very pricey. But Wii U, I've actually never played a Wii U. I'm sure it's very fun. Main Street Geek, thank you so much. Let me grab a sticker before I forget. And I will throw a sticker in with your order. I appreciate it so much. Let's go ahead and pull those. It's Nintendo Wii U. I think it's a Jurassic World lot, but it's a lot. Oh, it's a Lego uh, lot. So we got... Uh, Wii U Lego Dimensions, Wii U Lego City, The Force Awakens, Star Wars, and then Jurassic Park game only. Getting those sent out to you today. I, uh, hopefully today. I gotta really push to get it done. I will not be packing up the tape deck because there's zero chance I could do that and the rest. But all of these, I can get picked up, packed up in t 10 minutes. That's the difference. 10 minutes to do this. 20 minutes to do that. That's why I very much rotated, but I do. And this is also, I didn't know this, but you are also a repeat buyer. So thank you. I assume you bought a game before, but I don't know. And while I'm thinking of it and super cool fans out there, let me find it. I had to save it. A big thank you to Leopard Spot Music for the super chat. It's... <laughs> I've only gotten two Super Chats ever. One was from Cha-Ching King, which was very cool. I like his channel. I like... He gives me a very cool vibe of a good guy, so I like that. But this isn't about Cha-Ching King. Leopard Spot Music, also big thank you to you. I do very much appreciate it. Since I'm talking about viewers and helping the channel out, I like to throw this in every once in a while. The best way you can help the channel and not cost you anything at all is if you're going to do any shopping on eBay or Amazon and you click one of my links first and it directs you to eBay or Amazon, I will make a little bit of affiliate off that and you don't have to buy the thing in the link. You can just go about your normal shopping, especially coming up on the Christmas season. If you click my link first, send you to there, and then I just get some of Amazon's money. So that's a twofer. I get some money and it comes out of the pocket of Amazon. I think that's pretty good. Well, that's gonna be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Subscribe, share, and be good to each other. This really neat. Hey, hey, hey. Do they do they ever you know, really fix things? I have no idea what this is. What do I care? this.